let's give Windows Millennium Edition another try. So the idea is I'm gonna use parts that I know have been working really well with Windows 98, but I'm installing Windows ME. We run some benchmarks and some games and I'll pay attention noticing any differences and I will share my findings with you. Let's have a look at the test system. It's a Pentium 4, 2.4 gigahertz socket 478, a nice mainboard from Gigabyte with an Intel chipset that is important. Uh, we had some issues with via chipsets in the past. If you go with Intel, everything will be compatible and rock solid. And in terms of RAM, I went a little bit higher. Usually I go with 256 megabytes, but maybe Windows ME needs more RAM, 512 megabytes, that is plenty. For graphics, we're going with a GeForce 4 MX. These are really wonderful for Windows 98 and Windows ME. It's the MX440, the HP 8X version, and it has a 128-bit memory bus, so performance is pretty decent. For the driver, we're using the NVIDIA 4523. For the sound, we're going with something a little bit more high-end than usually with the Sound Blaster Live. This is the Audigy 2 ZS. There's a model number here. It's the SB0350 gold plated, beautiful looking sound card. The reason I picked this one is the game we're playing today has really good audio and I wanted to play with headphones and get the best sound quality. You want to use the WDM drivers, not VXD under Windows ME. So make sure you select the right option when installing the software. One of the benefits is if you use Demon Tools, which I've been using, which is a virtual disk drive, um, it will support audio CD tracks over the virtual disk drive. And that does not work with the VXD drivers. So that is a nice benefit. Here we have the total annihilation disk mounted into Daemon Tools and we can confirm it plays the audio CD tracks perfectly. And for storage, once again, we're using a SSD. This one is from SanDisk. It's got 64 gigabytes of capacity. We're using the StarTech ID to SATA adapter. Has worked beautifully. I've got some ATTO disk benchmarks on the screen. Under Windows ME, you also need to go into the device manager and enable DMA mode, the Intel chipset drivers. They don't enable that by default. The installation process was very similar to Windows 98. You boot from the Windows disk, it will partition and then format your drive. You get to choose what components you want, the language, the country, username, password, everything. It's very similar to Windows 98. With the drivers, no issues to report. I got the chipset drivers from the Gigabyte motherboard website, but I have uploaded all the resources also onto my website, just in case Gigabyte decides to pull support in the future. A quick look at the performance. Here we have GL Quake across all the resolutions. And yeah, this machine has enough performance. It runs the game perfectly fine, even at 1600 by 1200. We can see the same thing in Expandable. At the lower resolutions, the processor is holding things back. It could go faster, but the Pentium 4 only has so much performance. And again, at 1600 by 1200, we are still getting 76.8 FPS. Retro PC gaming is a beautiful hobby and I want more people to get involved and share the passion. So to make things easier, when you just built your retro machine, I like linking resources down below in the video description, downloads, links to drivers. For example, if you're looking for the Windows ME installation disk from WinWorld or the Audigy 2 ZS driver disk, resources like that. And now let's check out some games. The first one is a real masterpiece. This game has received many awards and yeah, it has achieved a cult status, that's for sure. It is nothing other than System Shock 2. It launched in 1999 and it is developed by Irrational Games and Looking Glass Studios. Now there's a lot to talk about here in this game and I will start with the audio because this game just oozes atmosphere and yeah, just horrific horror vibes, yeah. 
and it supports EAX audio. There is, uh, in the options, you can toggle EAX and listen to the difference. You basically get really nice reverb. And if you configure the speaker systems to headphones, you will get some really nice positional audio. So in terms of atmosphere, um, you are on this uh, big vessel and the audio is so well done. It's, um, you're not feeling like this is an empty ship. There is this nice hum in the background, like a low bass frequency. And uh, as you go through the corridors, you can hear all sorts of noises from computers making noises, from, yeah, little monkey uh, chirps that I find quite disturbing, to be honest. Uh, explosions, of course. The audio logs that sort of explain the plot and everything, they are also really well done. And yeah, this is a real highlight for uh, Windows 98, Windows ME retro gaming and with a sound blaster that supports EAX play with headphones it will give you a really creepy and immersive experience I played the game late night and uh, after a while it actually got too much I had to stop and then play the next day uh, it is really this intense System Shock 2 sounds absolutely amazing with headphones, so I do recommend investing into a nice pair of headphones. Go for something hi-fi. I would avoid gaming headphones. I don't think they are that great. And basically with headphones, for the same amount of money invested into headphones, you get much better audio compared to spending the same amount of money on speakers. Throughout the game, there are sorts of visual flashbacks like holographic recordings of past events that also explain what's going on. And that's also really nicely well done. The game, yeah, there's lots of exploring going on. And at first I played it like Half-Life, you know, but you can't play it like this. You're really sneaking and carefully peeking around corners. There are cameras everywhere. There might be turrets that shoot at you and of course um, infected humans that might attack you so this is a f uh, slow slowly slow paced game uh, with lots of scavenging and finding parts there are passcodes to find for trays vending machines where you can buy supplies you can hack uh, equipment so really really cool the controls are really tight it has two modes basically one an fps mode where you yeah, run around and look around and you can shoot and so on and then you press the tab key and it switches to an inventory mode where you can access the inventory and other systems at your disposal i've played maybe around two hours i'm still in the medical area there's a map which is really well done so it helps you just navigate uh, what's basically a huge maze there are many doors you can easily get lost and it also keeps track of, of your objectives and what you have to do next in terms of the technical aspects firstly where can you get this game so i own the digital releases from gog as well as from steam unfortunately both of these releases have been modified heavily to run on modern machines they will not function under windows 9 even injecting an old executable, uh, it didn't work. I ended up without having the wrench accessible, so that didn't work either. So just save yourself some time, go to archive.org, download the disk or buy a, a second hand disk uh, from eBay, for example. Install the latest patch, off you go and the game runs beautifully. I've configured it to run at 1024 by 768. That is a really retro friendly resolution where you get a good balance, you get enough detail, but the user interface doesn't end up too small. The text also doesn't end up too small. So everything is easy to read, but you still get high quality display. It supports only 16 bit colors. So sometimes the textures and the gradients can look a little bit on the rough side, but it's nothing too serious. I can't stress how much I enjoyed playing this. Yes, it's a very intense game. It has some RPG uh, elements, which I'm not the biggest fan of, and I don't quite know how my decisions uh, will affect the, the gameplay going forward. In the beginning, you can sort of train your character to uh, uh, improve on certain abilities, so I'm not quite sure how that will play out. But 
yeah, I can't wait to play some more. Uh, going forward, my, my plan of attack is to uh, copy all the game folders after I've done a project, copy them onto my NAS, and then the next project uh, I continue playing these games. And that way I will, yeah, have more time spending actually playing these games, enjoying them, and going deeper into the games, not just playing the first level over and over. So big thumbs up if you haven't played System Shock 2, absolutely put it right at the top of your list. It is a fantastic game. The next game is Tachyon the Fringe. I have started playing this in a previous video, so I have saved the save game and I played some more. The next mission, investigating a minefield, well, that was fairly straightforward. You press A to uh, enable the autopilot. This is very similar to Wing Commander. And then you just clear uh, those mines and some enemies uh, appear which you take care of. This is the joystick I'm using. It's the Thrustmaster T16000M. Works beautifully with Windows 98 and ME. You don't need any drivers, just plug it in. The operating system has its own USB drivers integrated. And so far with uh, Space Sim games, worked absolutely beautiful. It's got throttle and rudder and a hat controller up here. So yeah, can highly recommend it. And then the next mission, it's called Quarantine uh, Compromised. When you log into the, the job system where you can choose missions, it gives you a bit of a background. And for this one, you had to select special missiles, EMPs, because you need to disable some ships without yeah, killing the crew, basically. So this mission starts off with escorting a supply ship to a research station at Neptune. And on that station, there's an outbreak and people are infected and some people are fleeing in shuttles. So your task is to disable those fleeing ships with EMPs to contain the outbreak. And yeah, you do all that. You, the ship that you escorted, it docks at the station and unfortunately something goes wrong. Um, the station scans the ship and notices there's, some, there's a discrepancy between the manifest and what's actually in the cargo hold. And unfortunately, yeah, the ship explodes and takes the station with you. And just in real life, when you try to do the right thing, yeah, you still somehow end up um, getting in trouble. And yeah, you get arrested, uh, charged and found guilty of um, taking part in a conspiracy. And then you are banished from the solar system to the fringe of colonized space. And that's where I stopped playing. I copied the save game, looking forward to some more flight sim action. What I like about this game, it does remind me a lot of Wing Commander and X-Wing. It has um, not too much of a learning curve, so you can go straight in and have some fun. But there's enough complexity, like with the shield management and uh, attacking subsystems of large ships. There's enough substance in there to keep you really engaged. So thumbs up for this one as well. You can grab it from GOG, install it on a modern machine, copy the folder across, that's all you need. No tweaking necessary, a beautiful retro game. So did I notice any differences? Let's start with the positives. So the first thing, well, everything worked. Not a single crash, I didn't have any issues. And another thing I noticed, installing the chipset driver and then the machine identifying all the devices, that happened really fast. Also, because we are using WDM drivers, we can use Demon Tools and mount images and Audio CD digitally through the software works without any issues. So that was also really nice to see. There's some other benefits like included onboard USB storage support. I don't need that. I use a USB 3 adapter on a modern computer to plug in the SSD and copy files across. It's much faster that way. But too many, yeah, it works out of the box. You don't have to initially get a USB storage driver to access thumb drives. In terms of negatives, well, I didn't run into too many issues, to be honest. The installation took a little bit longer and maybe the system requirements, maybe it needs a bit more RAM, but that's really about it. And for this project, I didn't use MS-DOS. That is one key difference between Windows 98 and Millennium Edition. ME sort of uh, wanted to get rid of DOS and, and hit it. You can sort of restore it. I haven't quite looked into that. 
So where I see this as a, as a most useful scenario is not to replace Windows 98. In my opinion, you can't replace Windows 98. It's a fantastic retro operating system and you, you can boot into MS-DOS and play a wide range of DOS games. So you can't replace it. But if you want to build a dedicated, let's say a Windows, um, a Windows retro PC focusing on DirectX 7 with those few games that are uh, difficult to impossible to run under Windows XP and you don't care about MS-DOS, then yeah, Windows ME could be really of interest. So all in all, I think this project was a success. Of course, more testing is needed and I would love to hear from you, but at least for this project and with the parts I used and the games I've tested, big thumbs up, Windows ME worked flawlessly. I didn't have any issues. Yeah, maybe it's the combination of parts um, disabling certain things in the operating system. I'm also really curious about patches. There are some update packs floating around the internet. If you have any recommendations, please share them. It's something I definitely want to look at. For this project, I'm using the vanilla installation, no service packs, no patches whatsoever. The two games, also a big thumbs up, System Shock 2. Well, it's iconic. There's so much uh, out there about this game and it is really awesome. Play it with headphones, play it at late, late at night. There will be many jump scare uh, situations and yeah, it can get a little bit too much. I'm just, just warning you. But if you are into horror games and you like the exploration and the, the creepiness and uh, that sort of feeling, you will absolutely love this game. The other game, Tachyon the Fringe, also beautiful. If you uh, have experience with playing Wing Commander and X-Wing, I think this will be right up your alley and I really like it. It's not a space trading game. Um, we looked at that in a previous video, the X series of games. They're not quite my thing. I, I, I prefer going straight into the action, having a nice story. And yeah, the difficulty is also not too bad. I did have to replay that second mission a few times because I think it was a little bit too slow in catching those uh, shuttles and disabling them with the EMP. But in the end, it was fairly straightforward once you know what to do. So I think Windows ME does deserve a second look, not to replace Windows 98, but in specific situations where you want to have a dedicated Windows retro PC with DirectX 7 and OpenGL in mind for those games that are too difficult to run under Windows XP. Having said that, Windows 98, I don't see a disadvantage. I mean, it's, it's, it can do just as well in games, plus you're getting the MS-DOS support. So I think I will stick with Windows 98, but Windows ME, not that bad, apparently, at least in this project, um, positively surprised. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I really enjoyed producing it and especially playing these games. Leave a comment down below. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and you want to see more videos about old computers and classic games. That's what we do here on the channel. Those of you who are already subscribed, please check your notifications, hit that bell button and then select all to make sure you're getting updates on all the videos. It means a lot to me and really helps out with trying to grow this channel uh, going forward. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon in another one.